Under eye circles is a big problem for a lot of people. It gives us that tired, sad and droopy look that a lot of us hate. In this video, I'm going to be answering the question that you want to know, which is how do I get rid of my dark circle? Well, keep watching this video to find out more. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about under eye circles, focusing on what causes it and why it happens, and more specifically, the treatments that you can use to get rid of them. Any products or items that I mention in this video, I will link to in the description box below. So don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's move on to today's video. When it comes to the under eye area, people generally notice one of two things. One is that you get a tendency to have eye bags with increasing puffiness of the area, or the area looks quite hollow with increased pigmentation and dark circles. You could also be quite unlucky and have a mixture of both of these problems. So what are the reasons? I'm afraid to say that there can be multiple reasons for why you have under eye circles. It can range from your genetics all the way to your lifestyle. But I'm going to take it back a step and break it down into five main reasons. Number one is aging. As we all age, we lose volume. We lose facial fat, which is responsible for keeping areas around our eyes, cheeks and jaw plump. We also lose bone density and this all leads to areas of hollowing. The thing is, to a greater or lesser extent, we will all get these changes. These are a consequence of natural, normal aging. Number two is that it's hereditary. If you look around and you see your mother, your aunt, your uncle, or other family members that have puffy, dark under eye circles, it's more than likely that you will get them too. Number three is to do with thin skin in the under eye area. Did you know that the under eye area actually has the thinnest skin of all the parts of the body? It's only about half a millimeter thick as compared to other places like your soles of your feet or your palms. This means that combined with aging and general lifestyle measures, if you have visible capillaries and blood vessels underneath the eye, they're much more likely to show and cause discoloration. Typically, this tends to give a pinkish, purplish hue to the skin. Number four is pigmentation. If you have deeper skin tones, your olive complexion, or you have some color to your skin, this can well be an issue for you. There are things that can make this issue much worse. UV sun exposure, if you're constantly rubbing at your eyes and the eyelid area, and that can be as a result of dealing with allergies or you've got eczema around your eyes or other issues that mean that you're constantly rubbing or pulling or cause irritation to the eye area. This can all result in what's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and the resulting darkening can make the situation worse. And the final point is lifestyle. What's your lifestyle like? Do you smoke? Do you drink a lot of alcohol? Are you not sleeping very well? Are you under a lot of stress? All of this stuff can show on your face and worsen dark circles. I know that for me personally, if I'm not sleeping and getting a regular sleep schedule, I'm not drinking, I'm, you know, under stress, my dark circles are a lot worse. So that might be the issue in your particular case. Also your underlying health and if you have health conditions can make this worse. How can you tell the difference between whether it's to do with thin skin, whether it's to do with visible capillaries or it's pigmentation? There isn't a scientific way. It's just really by having a look at your skin. One of the things you can do is have a look at the under eye area. What you have to do is when you're in front of the mirror, it's just with a finger, just gently pull down the skin of the under eye. And okay, right now I've got makeup on and I won't be able to see it because I've got a whole load of concealer. Whilst you stretch the under eye area, you can have a look at the skin. If the reason for your dark circles is to do with shadowing or hollowness of the area, then when you stretch the skin, 
that shadowing should disappear. You may also notice that your dark circles are much more prominent in areas of bad lighting. If, however, your dark circles are due to a pigmentation problem, then no matter how much you stretch the skin, the pigmentation and the dark circles will still be there. If your dark circles are more to do with visible capillaries and blood vessels, on stretching the skin and pulling it, you will still see that pinkish, purplish discoloration and that doesn't fade on stretching. And eye bags are there. They're there whether you pull the skin down or not because they're there. I'm just gonna take this moment just to pause and ask that if you're liking this video so far, then hit that thumbs up button and give this video a like. That way I know that I'm on the right track and we're going somewhere. So what's the treatment and how can we get rid of these under eye circles? For me personally, I know that if my lifestyle is unhealthy and I'm not drinking my water, I'm not eating my vegetables, I'm being stressed and I'm not sleeping properly, these are things that if I was to address them, that would really help. If you have a habit of rubbing at your eyes or fiddling with the eyes or touching your face continuously, really try and cut that out. First of all, it's not very hygienic. And in these Corona times, the less you mess around with your face, eyes, nose, lips, the better you are. Secondly, when you're rubbing the eyes over time, this whole issue of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation comes. If it's because of allergies or eye problems, really speak to a doctor and try and get that sorted out so that you're not rubbing or pulling at the eye area. After all, it's a very thin and delicate area compared to the rest of the body. So once we've started the corrective measures, the other thing that you can do that's quite paramount is sun protection. I would recommend investing in a pair of sunglasses and not these tin, not these tin itty bitty ones, you know, the, other, the ones that are all the rage. You need to get ones that cover the celebrity ones, you know, the ones that they wear when they're doing the walk of shame. That's the sun, that's the pair of sunglasses that you need to be wearing. Something that's quite big that covers not just your eyeballs, but the under eye area so that we're protecting this whole part from further UV damage. For me, I know that I do a lot of driving. So when I'm driving, I have a driving hat, driving sunglasses, I have visors just to minimize the amount of UV damage that can occur whilst I'm minding my own business out and about driving. Okay, so now that we've figured out what the cause is, we can now get on to treating the dark circles. And often combination treatments is the key to making progress. If your dark circles is because of hollowing of the skin, then you may want to look into dermal fillers. Now, before you come for me, I'm not saying that everybody needs to start injecting themselves nonstop but it can be helpful for the right kind of person. Dermal fillers contain hyaluronic acid and that's a natural compound that our body makes. And that's one of the key things that's responsible for giving us that volume and good juicy texture. The way they work with dark circles is that they help to disguise that ridge that happens between the hollowing and the normal skin. They're not for everyone though, because Sometimes if done in the wrong person and there's too much volume injected into what's actually quite a small area, you can worsen the puffiness. And instead of taking attention away from the dark circles, you now have like a beacon saying, look, I've had some work done here, look at me. The other thing that can work in this case is PRP injections. PRP injections is platelet rich plasma and that's full of all the growth factors and the juicy stuff, kind of like the fertilizer. And this, especially when injected into the eye area, can cause our skin to produce more collagen and improve the skin texture. If you've got much more sagging, much more prominent bags, you may want to look into a blepharoplasty procedure. I know it sounds quite dramatic, but it may just be what the doctor ordered because I've seen the before and afters and it can be life-changing for a lot of people. In a blepharoplasty procedure, 
what happens is that they remove all that excess sagging skin and they stitch it back up so, and it gives you a much more youthful appearance. It doesn't even have to be under general anesthetic or a long complicated process. In some cases, they can even do it under local anesthetic with sedation and you may even go home the same day. So results, I would say, if your dark circles are due to visible capillaries, there are still some things that you can have done. You might want to look into fractional laser treatments for these dark circles. Fractional lasers have a lot of benefits. They can improve the skin texture and pigmentation and also stimulate collagen to improve that area. Microneedling is another thing that can work and in the right hands under the right professional can make a whole load of difference. If you're not interested in either of those things or you want a more short term fix, eye creams that contain caffeine, which help to constrict the blood vessels, may be something worth looking into. Another useful hack is just to get some used tea bags and put them in the fridge for about five, 10 minutes and then apply these to the under eye area. You can also get by with a cold compress or some cucumber slices and that works quite well too. If like me, the reason for your dark circles is to do with pigmentation, this can be rather tricky to treat. This is because in a lot of cases, the pigmentation is not just on the surface, on the epidermis, but can be deeper within the dermal layer and it takes a lot longer and a lot more effort to get rid of it rather than eradicating the dark circles entirely to look for a reduction and to maintain your results. That might be a much more realistic attitude to have, but there are still some things that works. Fractional lasers, again, may be something worth looking into, but it depends on your budget, your skin tone and what really floats your boat. Topical creams like vitamin C, retinols, niacinamide, etc., may also work. And I've done another video, which I will link to up here, and you can find out much more about those and how they're used in hyperpigmentation. You may also want to try a light use of a chemical peel, but I would recommend that you get this done under a professional, just because of how delicate and thin the eye area is and the potential for problems if it all goes wrong. Lastly, don't forget the magical transformative effects of makeup. I mean, after all, we've come such a long way and newer ingredients that contain light reflecting pigments that kind of diffuse and deflect away from the darkness and also color correctors do an amazing job. Depending on your skin tone, the color corrector that you will use may differ. If you have light skin or you are Caucasian, then you might want to use color correctors that have greenish tones, which cancel out that redness in the skin. Now, if you are deeper in color, your dark skin, then using oranges and red tones, they work quite well. Make sure not to forget the use of primer just to help even out the skin texture and smooth things out. Thanks to the wonders of technology, we've got so many YouTube tutorials, Instagram videos, and TikToks on how to color correct and conceal your dark circles. So go on and check those out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some benefit in it. And if you did, drop a comment below and let me know which part you found helpful and what tips you're gonna be doing moving forward. In the meantime, check out my other videos, see what you think, join, comment, subscribe, share the whole shebang. And yes, I am rubbish at doing outros. So I'm gonna end this here. Bye.